Welcome back to the series on screencasting. In the last video, we finished the bulk of editing our video. Now we will cover how to draw attention to specific parts of your video, whether it's visual markers, animations, transitions, or zooming. These effects will all help your audience better follow along while you're talking in your video. Let's first talk about visual markers. Visual markers are quite easy to apply since they can be just a photo. For example, if I were to draw attention here, I can insert a photo of a red arrow by dragging it on top of our footage and resizing the position to where I want. On it. I can also insert a red circle if I wanted to highlight something. You can make these visual markers yourself, but I've included a basic pack of them for you to download. Next, I want to talk about how to achieve some basic animations using these visual markers as our images. Remember the stopwatch we talked about in a previous episode? We'll be using this to animate. As you know, the timeline goes from the beginning of your footage to the end of your footage. When this stopwatch is blue or highlighted, this means that we are recording specific characteristics of our selected item. Let's run through an example. Let's say we want to animate this little circle to appear from small to large. How I would do this is to select where I want the animation to start, click on the stopwatch, and choose a small number. You can do this by dragging it to the left and right. Great, now we have our circle, and it's so small that we can't see it. Move the marker a little later in the timeline, and make sure we have our circle selected still, and increase the scale of our image. Now if we play back our footage, we will get an enlarging circle. The same thing applies to position. Click the stopwatch for position at the starting point and place your image where you want. Then go to a later point in your timeline and set another keyframe. There you go, now you have a moving image. You might have noticed by now that every time we create a keyframe or move a object, we see a separate timeline where our keyframes are appearing. We can manipulate them there as well. We can pull them closer together, which means our animation will be faster, or we can pull them further apart, making it slower. On to transitions. There's a couple default transitions that come with Premiere, and we can find them by going to the effects block on the right and typing in transitions. As you can see, we have a folder named video transitions. These can be dragged between clips to create a transition like so. Easy as that. One effect that might come in handy is speeding up or slowing down your footage, and to do so, select the footage and right click on the video track and go up to speed and duration. Once there, we can choose how fast we want our footage. If we want it faster, increase this to 200% or 1000%. If you want it slower, we can reduce it to 20 or 10%. We can reverse our footage there as well. Now you have a basic understanding of how keyframes work and moving and scaling images. I'd like to answer a question that comes up a lot, and it's how to zoom or pan in a screencast. Remember when we selected the position stopwatch and the scale stopwatch? To pan and zoom, we need both of these to be selected. Let's say I want to pan from the left to the right. First, we will set a initial state of where everything is by clicking this little diamond. All that does is to set the current state as a keyframe. Then we go further down the timeline and scale up our footage and move it to where we want it to be. Then go down the timeline some more and move our footage to the left. Playing back the footage, you will see that we have just panned and zoomed across our screencast. Don't be afraid to play around with these keyframes. You can always delete the footage and start again. In the next chapter, I want to cover some useful shortcuts that can help you speed up your editing. I'll see you in the next video.